Good morning, Sonic America. How are you all doing today? We're looking pretty good on the daily. I feel like we shot up above the alligator. Alligators flaring out. That's what you want to see. You know, means volatility. Well above the moving average now. You know, it's crazy with Phantom how just a few days ago, you know, you could be like, man, we're like below resistance. We're barely above support. We're what way under a moving average and then it's like just one crazy day and you're you're back in the game Mm -hmm. um that's why we love it right i mean that's why we do it um but yeah um daily is looking good i mean you know we had a big move you know this is more of like some consolidation but it's not bad right i mean the fact that we're kind of hanging in this area to me says all right like people are deciding if this is a good like good spot to buy um you know with all the movement plus there's just been like a flurry of news about sonic a lot of things going on um i feel like the team's been really good about they've just been constantly you know pumping out content whether it's you know things about partners or partnership announcements or you know, marketing campaign kind of stuff. Um, so there's just been, there's been a lot going on. Now, the only thing they need to do, right, is I feel like if they could just get in on this, we'd, we'd have it, we'd be a slam dunk. Join me live on Twitter Spaces at 8 p.m. this September 16th for the launch of World Liberty Financial. We're embracing the future with crypto and leaving the slow and outdated big banks behind. (laughs) That was the whole thing? That was the whole thing. I I saw him do another one where he was a little bit more verbose. He was talking about um, like how they've already done a great crypto project and how they can't wait to do another one. Um, Will you be getting in on this, you think? Is this I'm a just, direct competitor sub to Sonic? Yeah, I'm just gonna um go in there and be like, let's let's see how much phantom we can put in the uh, world liberty treasury. <laughs> this thing's gonna pump. I'm just gonna give them like the whole deal, right? They're gonna I'm gonna fly down there. Well, you're you could probably drive over there. Yeah, I could drive to Mar a Lago. I could drive to Mar a Lago and, and really give him a piece of my mind and say, hey, what you did on January 6th, I thought it was really cool. And I would like for you to do it on the blockchain too. <laughs> Let's do January 6th on the blockchain. Yeah, please do January 6th on the blockchain. I want to see you marching to. Oh, I don't want to say any specifics. I can't. Well, I don't want to get FBI. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think that would be a great pitch, though. If you just said, listen, I'm going to get right to the point. I don't want to waste your time. Um, I know there's a lot of people with a lot of money here. Mm-hmm. So just hear me out. January 6th, but on the blockchain. What if I go What if I go in and hit him with a little bit of the sweet and sour? So I go in and I say, hey, you know what? I'm not a fan of you. I don't like the way you talk, the way you do things. But I did really like what you did on January 6th quite a lot. <laughs> and I think we could do that on the blockchain. And I think we could do, I think we could replicate that success in the blockchain. No, but really though, I honestly think if you can get in early enough, a Trump crypto project is a guaranteed pump off the off the top. You just got to get out before it dumps, right? Yeah, it's just he like a he can it's just like a Ponzi. Based on like everything that he's loosely been involved with so far, I would say um it's like an amplified Ponzi. Um, you just have to, you know, it's like the time frame of the Ponzi for like a pump and dumps, like a little longer than most of them. Cause I guess there's just more money involved, but, um, I'll never forget like peak bear market when those Trump NFTs came out and it was like all we had, like, we were just like, we're making money boys. Like mm-hmm. they're hundred, hundred bucks a pop and we're flipping those things. And that was, you know, that lasted for about two weeks. So, um, I'm curious to see what this is. I guess it's not an NFT or a token. Uh, sounds like a platform. Um, I think it's going to be really funny if it's just basically like a Uniswap fork on Ethereum or something. 
That'd be um, fucking really cool. If yeah. He's just in a slump. I was thinking, like, what if this is like he's he's trying to make like a free up Binance competitor, dude? What if he's launching like a full on centralized exchange? That would be something. That would be wild. I mean, I just find the timing interesting. I'm like, bro, is time really? Is it really the time right now to get like associated with like some crypto ponzi's? <laughs> yeah, particularly when you know. The world is so dire right now. Just give it like a month or, you know, wait till the election's over and like the day oh, after the election be like, come here and use your ref link and save 15% on your trading fees. You know, it is kind of crazy because if he does win election and then he is running this thing, like that could be the world of liberty could become the real centralized bank on, on the blockchain. Maybe he starts pushing this, the treasury to <laughs> Yeah, just go check Seth. I think it's an Ave fork. That's the only thing I've really heard as well, is that it's some kind of lending. Um, which you, you know the version of Go that works. Really, I could really tie this thing together. I'd say, you know, allow me to introduce you to my associate, Andre Cronier, who's happens to be working on credit scores on the blockchain. That's how oh, we yeah. do it. That's how we do it, guys. Do we want to talk about that? We want to talk about the credit scores on the blockchain? Yeah, for sure. Um, I had this pulled up, but we'll also touch on that. Um, when Trump becomes his thing. credit score, isn't it? Andre, you crazy son of a bitch. So he had a post saying, you know, I made a mistake. Five, not four. Um, so now Andre's alluding that there are five projects, not four. Um I don't know when they're going to be released. You know, um, he's kind of made it clear that he's not going to rush anything. So maybe I wouldn't be shocked if something is like ready for really soon for Sonic. But it sounds like he's not like really worrying about that too much. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was going to pull up the credit score thing because that was very interesting. Um, here yeah right here so mm -hmm. here would be sort of like the concept i guess is they could pull all your data you know or not data but you know they'd pull your information like i guess from certain lenders or whatever on on the chain and um i guess be able to determine they'd have some kind of criteria to give you a credit score yeah i find this interesting I feel like I've got a lot of questions, um, you know, because so so like the liquidity here would be liquidation. Like how often are your loans being liquidated? I would because, imagine so. Um, yeah, it's still dependent on um, what do you call it? Collateralized lending, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you got loan battle, loan value, status, current balance, delinquency, history. I guess the biggest first question off the top, right, is what's to stop people from just selling wallets with a good credit score to someone and then they just, you know. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this, how before I had kind of like seen some of the details, it seemed funny to me that you could just be like, oh, I'm just going to use a different wallet and I'll have yeah. a good credit score. But then I started thinking about it and I was like, well, surely they'll like implement things like how like how long has the wallet been around how active is the wallet um I, i'm sure that there's going to be like ways for them to like scrape information that will maybe show like okay like you know this is like the guy's main wallet this is you know it's been around a long time um i mean i'm just speculating on this but i would say it would it's got to be like more criteria than just like took a loan for this much and he paid it or not um oh yeah i mean like a typical credit score right like it's the age of the accounts the age of like the um the debts yeah and like i mean often they take in i think for credit scores they take in like income to expense ratio right um yeah. but yeah it seems like on the on the chain right now as it is you still have like I just don't know how feasible it is to sidestep identity still like, cause it's still like, uh, you know, I can make a living by just like having like really good credit scores 
on like my wallets and then I just sell them to people and then they like like the private key and then they can just like fuck up the credit. And that's like, you know, I mean, like, I don't know if we'll ever open the door for unsecured loans with this. What I'll be interested to see is um, there's surely people that, you know, are thinking like, oh, I could just like bought a bunch of loans, you mm -hmm. know? If you had like an old wallet and you just bought it a bunch of loans and whatever, but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, that's what I imagine though, is the things you were just talking about. I think that there's a lot more to it than, um, simply some of your on-chain activity. There's probably gonna be like a lot of other things. Um, but what's important for this, you know, and you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, that's how yeah. it is. On, that's how it is in web three. I mean, there's a, there's gotta be a starting point and, I think it's an important mission. It's like I know a lot of people, and I haven't even I have not even really seen a lot of this in the comments, but I think you will see backlash from a lot of people just saying, like, okay, well, now you're just turning, you know, crypto into like traditional finance system or whatever. Yeah. But I think the big picture is that you have to think about the kind of money that unsecured loan sort of debt could pump into the system right um yeah you know if people were able to borrow on something like this where it's no longer like a collateralized deal it's now like oh now i have you know this is this is free money just getting pumped in right yeah. um and it's a, it's like a new ecosystem because now it's like i'm sure the interest rates are going to be way different than what we're used to um, you know, there'll be like a whole new thing going on, you know, in terms of like ways that protocols can make money, um, you know, tons of interest, you know, tons of extra cash pumped in, um, mm -hmm. or stables rather, I wouldn't say cash, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's important, you know, um, and you know, it's like, Hey, if it goes against your moral principles, if you're whatever, I mean, of course you don't have to use it. So mm -hmm. you don't got to do it, but I feel like this will be a big deal, especially for institutions, you know, big protocols, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, I think it'll be a huge deal. I don't really know yeah. when he's, he was talking yeah. about it, but I don't know when it's like really launching or anything. I think that that makes the most sense to me is if it's something like a big protocol or like official teams wallet, then they, like building a credit mm -hmm. score, like having some sort of public uh, identity attached to it um, makes a lot of sense in terms of opening the doors. Uh, you can also, it, there is research that can be done into the effects of unsecured loan, like loans unsecured credit perpetuating itself through markets. Um, a lot of people like point to the seventies is like when unsecured credit, like by credit cards really exploded in like the retail market. And there's some people that say it's really good. Some people say it's really bad. So uh, we'll see, but I don't think even in this stage, I, it's a cool break. Like it's a cool tool to have built and uh, I'm interested to see how it's used, but I don't think it's going to necessarily like, um, be available for like you and I, it's not going to be super useful for you. And I, I mean, it could be, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take time, you know? And like I said, it's like, you got to start somewhere, but that's kind of in my head too. Is like, imagine, you know, say we were in like a bear market, like we were just in, that was super desolate and brutal. And, you know, that would open the doors for, you know, someone like, I don't know, you say like, Oh, like curve's not a great example because of the way, their funds get handled sometimes. What a uh, credit score would be. Yeah, like like the founder of Curve might like pull like a Danielli and say, I'm gonna take a loan so I can like put more leverage in the market. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean I just think like, okay, yeah, like you but just imagine I feel like you know, when the market's especially desolate, it would allow for you know a lot more money to like come into the market. So yeah. Very early days, but yeah, I think it's going to be, I'm looking forward to that, honestly. And yeah. there was some, I think it was D-Bank. Um, I don't have the link, but I believe someone had already shared screenshots of D-Bank was like putting some kind of, they already have some kind of area they're building in D-Bank to like show scores and stuff. So um, nice. something, something's cooking. 
Yeah, pretty soon I'll have a credit score for my wallet. I can't wait. Um, it it kind of is reminding me too, though, just like with the nature of our industry, the amount of scammers out there. I'm imagining like you saw how recently there was that Chase Bank quote unquote exploit where a bunch of people were just doing check fraud to themselves. Just <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I love it. And that. Uh, I could see that kind of playing out uh, on chain. Uh, if people begin to start offering unsecured loans. But like I said, I think this is going to progress like much more securely step by step. Yeah. I, I think, think I think what you said is right. probably very likely where it's going to start at just like a certain protocol or institutional level. Yeah. It's we're probably still way out before people can just, you know, take out unsecured loans. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to be getting a, an unsecured crypto credit card. <laughs> Just mail to them. Yeah. yeah. Not until they can seize your assets. Or uh, I like I like the idea that maybe if um maybe if your credit score is bad, they give you a loan, but it's in like a shit coin. Yeah. They're like we yeah. got a bunch, we got a bunch of this token in the treasury. Just give them that. Dude, that's an interesting idea. Like it, it it's a tiered up system. Like the, yeah. depending on your credit score, it's not that you can never get a loan, it's just the quality of the asset just I think that would be hilarious. You're like I approve. I was approved for five thousand dollars, but it's in Pepe. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's on you to find a liquidity to get out or whatever, you know. But yeah, um, something else that um, we were talking about at the top of the show before I had my technical issue, but our very own Disco Chuck was having a convo, also about um, Andre's thing about you know, hey, I wonder how much money I could have gotten if there was gas monetization when I was doing stuff on Ethereum. Um, he did kind of like a rough count here of, you know, here's some of like, like a rough estimate of some of like the top protocols, what they could have gotten back if they had 90% gas fee rebate. Um, I mean, Ave is insane. 87 million circle 305 million um tether almost a billion dollars uniswap this is yeah uniswap does cross a billion two billion dollars would have come back to them i mean that's that's, that's a lot insane. of money um so and then yeah down here you know they kind of had a thing where disco chuck was saying hey you know i was gonna make a board andre says go for it Please, so, cook. <laughs> please cook, sir. Please cook. So, uh, yeah, nice work, Disco Chuck. Though. This is cool. Um, he's got a few projects in here right now. Um, now, this is in um, this is measured in Ethereum, right? So, this is compound. Nineteen thousand Ethereum. Yeah, so we got compound, also Ave. My God. And um, I noticed if you go down more, you had to like run the. Let's see if I if I ran it right. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that quite yet. I'm talking about millions of dollars here. But I millions like this of dollars um, here consumed by like, Ethereum. Yeah, I like this um, idea for this dashboard because. Um, I'm sure Disco Chuck's got the same idea here where, um, you know, you could just probably keep adding protocols to it. And, you know, they could see like, man, like if we're doing gas rebate, like look how much we could get, you know, gas monetization. Um, so cool idea for sure. Um, I think the 90% gas thing is still, I don't know. It's, um, you don't hear quite as much chatter about it as I think you should. I think that's kind of why, you know, Andre had it sort of like a series of tweets about it. Um, and, you know, trying to show that, I mean, that can be significant right now. Do you think we're getting this message out enough? Like in terms, because Dracula, you talk to a lot of builders on how many builders you talk across various networks too, but, the hype around Sonic right now, because the incentives are kind of insane. Um, 
you know, I, I work with a couple teams and they've launched a couple different networks and uh, their relationships, the relationship with the foundation behind the chain is like pivotal, right? Mm -hmm. like what kind of support you're going to get? Because like there's so many chains now, like why do I, why do I go where I go if I'm going to decide yeah. to build something? There's like, they've got to have an audience. How much support am I going to get? Are they going to get grants? Am I going to get tokens to disperse anything like that? And it seems like Sonic has pulled out the juiciest sweetest package you possibly can you're going to get reimbursed for all your like 90 percent of your gas fees you get these gemstones okay you get precious minerals uh <laughs> yeah you get airdrops like there's this un unprecedented levels of compensation available here yeah i agree um yeah i'm i'm hearing a lot of chatter it's warming up for sure um it's kind of been the first time in a while where i've had teams like reaching out to me like you know can i get a you know can i get an intro can i talk to somebody so i think i feel like it's building you know um i think on the builder side of things the initial rumblings of sonic it was more of like a there was still that mentality of like well there was multi and there was this and there was that or people were even like i built something there but i had to leave and you know you know, still just kind of that mind, like a negative sort of outlook, kind of like, I don't care if it's a new chain, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the words really getting out and people are starting to notice. And um, yeah, like you said, I mean, there's the airdrop campaign, there's the gemstone thing, which is kind of like what Blast did, where, you know, that'll allow the protocols to actually like give extra rewards for people doing things with their mm -hmm. project um you know the gas monetization and then even on top of all that there is still the like the grant and builders programs that are both more reminiscent of last season when DeFi really exploded on phantom in terms of what they're going to put in um and what they're going to you know fund projects with and stuff so yeah i mean i think I don't think you could have a stronger approach than this. This is like a ten prong, like this is very attractive. And uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm having people starting to reach out. Um, so yeah, the hype, the hype is building. The hype is real. Um, so yeah, pretty excited for it though. I mean, there's a lot of confirmed things that are definitely coming that are exciting. And then there's like, you know, little, chatter here and there of some other things that are on the way so um a lot to be excited for so good morning mr clean oh yeah let a thousand flowers bloom on sonic mr clean welcome back um so and then kind of like piggybacking on all that they um they dropped a new site and you know they had a site before but it was kind of like more of like a little more of like a placeholder kind of deal this is more of like the the full-fledged you know wow, all the info good. yeah they have it's like a super well done um everything you need to learn about you know s token info which that's another thing too that there's just been so much going on right that I have yet to hear anyone talk about operating a node and you know a lot of the changes to the validator system we've gone over it before how you know it's way shorter it's gonna like kind of like change how people have access to their assets and this is a big deal that i don't think is getting touched on very often quite yet but it's going to be really easy to be a validator they have made it to where the validators like it's going to be really light in terms of what you have to have with like storage really light with like what you need for hardware um hmm. you know they even have it here you know set it up in one day um you know minimum cool. stake fifty thousand s or fifty thousand phantom um so you know significantly lower than what we've had in the past um that kind of passed early on with some of those governance votes and i guess at that point people were like well probably not going to start a phantom node right now 
but for S, the 50K, that's pretty exciting. I mean, with current prices, let's take a gander here. 24000 for a validator is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Draco, we gotta talk. We gotta talk all fair about this. Uh, what kind of ROI am I gonna get on this thing, huh? Because maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll run a little node, dude. Um, well, it'll be interesting cool. to see. Um, you know, obviously with lower requirements, that I think that um, with the old Phantom system, you know, there was that famous number. I think it was like what, like sixty something nodes or seventy nodes or something. Uh -huh. And you know, there was there was understandably a tight grip on the requirements because you know more validators equals less money for everybody um but i like this approach because it's there's still a little bit of a barrier um and you know not saying like oh it's great that like not everybody can afford it but i think it makes it to where it should have like decent equilibrium in terms of okay if you're gonna put out the money to invest in this um, you should have decent returns. Mm -hmm. um, typically on a validator, you're not going to just like. I'm know, not going to be rich. I can't retire to any. Yeah, money. I mean, it's a longer it's a longer term investment. Typically, I mean, it's more like, you know, in crypto, we're used to getting those gains really fast. Um, validators are better for more like if you're saying, hey, like in a year or two, I think, you know, the price is going to be way different on the token and way. But, you know, um, so. That's really where you kind of make your money is especially if you're on like the ground floor with a validator for something that you're saying, okay, it's only 50 cents right now, but two years, I think it's going to be like five or six dollars um, and you're earning tokens that whole time. So, oh yeah, I mean, so typically it's a longer term investment. It's not like, like I said, it's not like what we're used to on certain things, like how many things, you know, where you put some money in and couple weeks later a week later you know days yeah. later you've already double or tripled it you know it's it's not like that sort of crypto investment i've been thinking about that i think those kinds of crypto investments are kind of long gone by now like there are still those those ones that might hit a big pop right but the days of uh you know when people are talking about like bull markets stuff like that people talk about uh, when the bull market comes you know all the all the altcoins are in 100x I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen again. I think that that time period is it's a, it's a pleasant memory. But it's going to be gotta, different. Yeah, you got to be mature now. There's a, the, the adults are in the room now. The guys with the suits are in the room now, and they're not letting anyone hit a hundred x off some dumb shit anymore. You well, <laughs> maybe you just go to meme coins. Maybe yeah, you can still do that. And I think that's kind of what we've seen is that meme coins. You're looking at more like a lotto scratch off than anything. Um, mm -hmm. actual alts did terribly for almost two years now, but I think that's what I'm seeing a difference is, and I've tweeted about it a few times over the last couple months where you're starting to see like alt strength kind of, you know, nothing's like pumping like crazy, but you're starting to see that strength. And I think that's the difference from when we are like in a true bear market is that is when like alts especially like DeFi alts you know they're gonna get to shine but i i, I think i agree with you though that i don't know i don't know if it's ever gonna be a cycle like the last cycle ever again um because not only was it a bull run we just had so many other things right we had mm -hmm. you know the covid stimmies everybody's sitting at home like crypto was a great thing to play right i mean mm -hmm. everybody's inside on their computers they got extra money um you know, I just don't know if we ever have that sort of like we have like a kind of like a storm brewing right now that we've covered. You know, we had, you know, we got the, the having pricing effects coming, um, you know, election year. They're probably about to stop with, the, you know, they're probably about to cut rates for lending and borrowing and everything. Then we um, just need another pandemic and another stimulus package. Yeah, and I think we might be cooking with Crisco, buddy. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just some people even say like the last cycle was like a super cycle. I I don't think that's the case because it was not motivated entirely by just like 
financial things all lining up. It was like it was truly like a once in a lifetime kind of setup. Um, but with that all being said, a bull market is a bull market in crypto. I'm not like totally poo pooing on it. I don't think we're going to be in boring chop forever. Um, yeah. I think I think that t the time is coming when we are in a true bull market and there will be bull market things and price movement and price action. But I agree that, you know, you should probably curve your expectations if you think that every alt you hold is going to 100x in the next cycle. Maybe like pick like two or three that you think are going to be like good winners. Um, I don't know. I, I do think it's going to be different. I mean, because every market at the end, it is different. There's things that are similar, but there's going to be, you know, even looking at like metas, you know, we've mm -hmm. had some insane metas in the last year or so. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and furthermore, as like you said, the suits are here um, as more of that kind of money and those kind of players come in, you know, every cycle from here on out, I think, yeah, like you're going to see volatility shrink a little bit. There's always going to be those outliers because there's outliers in even the stock market. But, oh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, those days of spending $10 and bringing back $250,000 are probably getting fewer and far between. For sure. For sure. I mean, I think, uh, like you said, there are always outliers in like the stock market, for example, right? Like you can find, I mean, you can find stocks that go up 500% on the day out of nowhere. Like it's not an uncommon occurrence. It's, I mean, it's, it is uncommon, but like, <laughs> like, uh, but it happens, but it does happen. Yeah. And it probably will continue to happen with more frequency for a while here in crypto. But, you know, you could just see it from like the way fundraising has changed, uh, you know, the, the shift towards like points away from like typical like flat out airdrops. I, it's going to be a lot harder to get a, a Toyota Corolla airdropped to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I think those days might be kind of gone. Um, Andre had a post about this that I thought was quite interesting um, because this has been a thing he said from the beginning, which is the um, the upfront investment in terms of for like emissions, like these super high emissions, really large airdrops upfront. Like those exist to kind of get people. It's like a promotional offer. It's like a buy, like a, your first. Uh, I got a Hello Fresh thing, right? It was like free breakfast for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, okay, an insane cost marketing wise, but the idea is get you on, try out the product, stick around, and so because crypto is a is maturing, like we've always wanted, people are using it. They find out the institutions are learning. Okay, this shit works. It's like something I can work with. There's no reason to keep paying like a, an insane onboarding fee for, for customers, yeah. uh, especially when you can shift to revenue generation, right? Like you see with Aave and I think Uniswap hitting the fee switch. They're not going to be so keen on paying for mm -hmm. small guys like me to farm 500% on my 50 bucks, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, the game is definitely changing. Um, and speaking of airdrop, this is kind of cool. They have a little a little estimator of what the Sonic airdrop is going to be worth based on current price. And I mean, I'm, so I'm looking down here. I mean, that's accurate. You know, it's the amount of tokens that are going to the airdrop and current price, 48 cents. So $91 million is a intense. That's an intense injection. Um, I'd be curious to see how much someone like the medium size to bigger airdrops have been valued at. You could probably build a, a wing of a hospital for this. For <laughs> Yeah. So that's a cool little thing on the, uh, on the site. I guess that's going to like keep updating live. Yeah. If you go to start building and you go down a little bit for your little builder guy here, we're going to show you right now how to do it. You go down just a little bit more. There you go. Get involved. That's what you need to be signing up for there, fellas. You need to get involved. I guess they've tied it all. Project on here. Yeah, I guess they've tied it all together with the, uh, we were talking about like the test net swap, how it had all the, you know, different minerals and whatever. I mean, I guess this is how they're, they're doing it here. Precious gems, dude. Yep, the precious gems. And this is cool too. Um, bounty program. 
So they got things that they're like really wanting people to build. Some interesting stuff here. Yeah, here we go. Wireless networks. We should make a, a sonic cell phone. We should energy grids, dude. We should make a sonic nuclear power plant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna pitch them the energy grid. I think see what they think. I would be so fucking bullish on Sonic if we had a, a nuclear energy like that's probably one of the hardest deals to probably land. But if we could get like our blockchain is powered by a nuclear reactor, think about it. That's probably the greatest cross section of nerd shit ever. Yeah, and they got community movements here, so uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll give us some gems to hand out. Oh yeah, that'd be cool for our yeah. IRL user acquisition campaigns. You and yeah. I would have to uh, get an RV and tour the country, and we're handing out gemstones to on college campuses or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, we got the the RV, the Sonic RV US tour, and um, yeah, we just got like these like little pouches full of yeah. the gems, and we just hand out the pouches of gems everywhere we go. Dude, that's that's a good ass idea, I think, for real. Um, and then we have a guy. We have like Sonic races everywhere we go. We have like we have some like really fast track guy or something that we've endorsed, uh -huh. and he puts on the Sonic suit and he races people at the college campus. <laughs> so if you, if you can beat if you can beat our guy in a race, you get some gems, dude. <laughs> yeah, if you can beat Sonic, then you. You get the awesome dude. Come bags, on. All right. Two pouches of gems. So yeah, I hope you guys yeah. are listening. I hope marketing is listening to this. Yeah, bring us on board. We've got ideas. But yeah, I love I love the bounty list idea. I mean, that's cool. Here's just some more, you know, some more info. But yeah, it's it's truly on, isn't it? I mean, and you know, the Sonic Boom is a totally separate program. You know, that is like the, like I said, the protocol level where they can reward their users. So, you know, right now, 91 million on the airdrop side, 34 million on the Sonic Boom side. I mean, this has got to be one of the biggest, biggest ever. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain. Um, I'll probably look into that for next show, like some exact values. But like I said, they're, they're coming in strong. It's very competitive. Hell yeah. So I'm in, I'm impressed oh, yeah. for sure. As should you be. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all we got time for today. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for bearing with me as I had my audio issue. That was driving me insane, but we got through it. Um, so yeah, we're always streaming on X twice a week at OX Sonic Talk, YouTube, GM underscore Sonic, and anywhere you listen to podcasts, GM Sonic. In fact, you know, if you want to go back and play this through, we'll cut out the uh, dead air where my stuff's not working. So, um, mm -hmm. but anyway, we hope everybody has a good weekend and we'll see you next time. Adios, amigos.